Pavel Durov, the founder and CEO of Telegram messaging app was arrested at the Bourget airport in Paris on Sunday. He arrived in Paris from Azerbaijan. Durov was in Azerbaijan's capital Baku this week, in the same period that Russian President Vladimir Putin paid an official visit to the South Caucasus Republic. The 39-year-old who has a French citizenship was traveling aboard his private jet during the arrest, TF1 said on its website. Durov might face charges related to terrorism, money laundering and drug trafficking. If convicted, he may face 20 years in prison. Othman, the national directorate of the French Judicial Police, had placed an arrest warrant on the businessman. The Ukrainian armed forces may launch a counteroffensive in 2025. The Telegraph writes about this. It is likely that the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation is aimed at forcing Russia, at least partially, to divert troops from the offensive in the Donbass to counter the threat on Russian territory. However, so far Moscow has not taken the bait. The Russian army continues to put pressure on eastern Ukraine. There, Ukrainian troops, understaffed and stretched thin, are only capable of slowing down, not stopping, the enemy's advance, the publication writes. In such key cities as New York, Toritsk, Chesov Yar and Pokrovsk, which are crucial for holding the remnants of the Donetsk region, intense fighting and shelling from heavy artillery have been going on since the start of the Ukrainian offensive. According to some reports, New York may have fallen completely, the article says. In addition, shelling of civilian towns in the Donetsk region has increased. These attacks may be part of a larger strategy by Russian forces. In this regard, Ukrainian units are concerned that the diversion of forces and assets to the Kursk region could jeopardize their ongoing defensive operations. Towns such as Chesov Yar remain active battlefields, and there is no sign of improvement. At the same time, in Toritsk and Pokrovsk, Ukrainian forces are reporting an increase in the number of Russian aircraft sorties, sometimes as many as 10 per day. Ukrainian forces in Pokrovsk are suffering from a shortage of manpower, which makes defensive operations difficult and counterattacks virtually impossible. The town's proximity to the front line and the range of Russian artillery pose a significant threat, as its fall could lead to Russia encircling Konstantinovka, Kramatorsk and Slavyansk. Thus, despite the surprise of the Ukrainian attack in Kursk Oblast and its significant political benefits, the picture in Ukraine itself is hardly rosy. The Russian command remains focused on the offensive in Donetsk Oblast, using infantry, armor and aviation. This could bear fruit. Ukraine is counting on the fact that Russia may eventually need to redeploy troops from other occupied territories of Ukraine to counter its offensive in Kursk Oblast. American officials suggest that Russian troops have already been partially withdrawn from Crimea, Kherson and Zaporizhia Oblasts and may be redirected through the occupied Donetsk and Luhansk Oblasts to counter the Ukrainian Armed Forces Kursk Offensive. Ukrainian sources also report that Russian troops may be withdrawn from the Kharkov front. But, crucially, there is no sign of a Russian withdrawal in the Donbass. If true, this would indicate Moscow's determination to prioritize this offensive, even as Ukrainian forces continue to hold on to their advantage in the Kursk region. Despite heavy losses, Russia's continued gains in the Donbass are bolstering its resolve. However, several factors could still undermine Moscow's resolve. First, if Ukraine continues to make gains in Kursk, Russia may be forced to withdraw more forces from the occupied territories, potentially weakening its defensive position. This could extend the range of Ukrainian drone strikes, further undermining Russia's long-range strike capabilities. Secondly, Ukrainian brigades currently undergoing training could be deployed to reinforce the Kursk or Donetsk regions, depending on where Russian forces show signs of weakness. Such flexibility could allow Kiev to stage a counteroffensive in 2025, rather than just another assault on occupied Donbass, 
the publication writes. The Crimean Peninsula should not be forgotten. Ukraine's destruction of the Black Sea Fleet and the accelerated dismantling of the Russian air defense network in Crimea have led to Russian troops on the peninsula going on the defensive. Guerrilla attacks have increased, and Ukrainian intelligence suggests that Crimea will be the next target, with the Kerch Bridge, already a frequent target of Ukrainian sabotage, likely to be destroyed in the near future. While a conventional offensive to retake Crimea seems ambitious, the movement of Russian forces to reinforce the Donbass and Kursk could open the door to increased Ukrainian covert operations on the peninsula, the authors of the article believe.